Hello guys, in this video I'll tell you how to check your eligibility for Australian Permanent Residency. How you can check if you're eligible to apply for Australian PR or not. Also, all those IT engineers watching this video, please watch this video until the end because I've got very vital information towards the end of this video. Hello guys, this is Shitan Shu from Dream Abroad. If you want to immigrate to Canada or Australia without paying hefty fee to the consultants, please visit my channel. I've got many videos. I also upload videos every week, so many videos every week. So please subscribe my channel if you haven't subscribed yet. Okay, so yesterday I posted this video, which was the step by step process to apply the Australian PR. Now it got very good response and people straight away started asking for step one, which was the eligibility. So I decided to make this video pretty early. I'll provide the link to this video in uh, the description box or rather let me take you to this video straight away. So guys, this was the video that I was talking about. This was the step by step process for applying the permanent residency of Australia. If you haven't watched this video, I'll provide the link in the description box. You can check it out. So over here, you can check the uh, first step actually was meant for the checking the eligibility of your uh, visa application. If you're eligible to apply for the PR or not. So over here, I'll tell you that the uh, first and the foremost thing which you should check is the minimum points for eligibility are now 65. Five points got increased on 1st of July. So over here, uh, you can see that there are two steps of checking the eligibility. The first one is the occupation check and the second one is the points check. You should check if your occupation is listed in the occupations list. And also you should check the points, how many points you actually score. If you score more than 65, in that case, you'll be eligible. Okay, so let's start with the occupation check. So this is the official website of Government of Australia and I'll provide this link in the description box. Over here they have listed the occupations. So first of all let's just check these visa subclasses. So if you're applying for a permanent residency, I'm talking only in that case, you should concentrate only on three visa sub subclasses, visa subclass 189, 190 and visa subclass 489 which is for state or territory nominated okay so we have to focus only on these uh, three visa subclasses i'll make a separate video on it so as you can you know where i'll explain the benefits of it you know the difference between these three visa subclasses and what do they actually mean but for now you just concentrate on these three and make a, a note in your mind about these three 189 190 and 489 okay before we uh, before we proceed let me tell you that these occupations listed over here are in the alphabetical order so you can find your occupation so what you have to check let's suppose you are an accountant so you have to check uh, if you are applying for which visa you're applying for you you should know that and 189 is over here and 190 is also over here and 489 is also over here. So if in case you are an accountant, in that case, you, you can apply for all the three visa subclasses and your assessing authority would be CAANZ, CPAA or IPA. Similarly, somebody who is an agricultural engineer can also apply for 189, 190 and 489 and his or her application would be assessed by Engineers Australia. Uh, so all the occupations are actually listed over here. Anybody who is actually into IT or computers, into software uh, computers, you know, their profile have to uh, go through the ACS and of course they would be here as well. So 189, 190 and 489. So it's it's not the case that all these three visa subclasses will be there for all the occupations. You have to check for your occupation if it's there or not. So uh, let's suppose somebody who is 
who is a database database administrator again you have to go through acs so this is something uh, in regards to the occupation you have to check this is a big big list of course you'll uh, definitely find your occupations uh, over here so you have to find your occupation you have to check the visa subclass if it is applicable for your occupation or not and also you have to check the assessing authority so these three points you have to check from this particular page i'll provide this in the description box so this was about the occupation check now you have to check the points okay so over here you have to check the points there are diff different criteria the first of all is the age so when you talk of age in that case you'd be avoided 25 points if you are between 18 to 24 years of age you'll be avoided maximum points which is 30 for people who are between 25 32 and so on so somebody who has got who is above 45 years of age you will not be able to uh, apply for the Australian PR so this is the eligibility criteria that anybody who is above 45 cannot apply for the Australian PR okay so now let me tell you about the English test okay before I tell you about the English test let me t uh, tell you a little about that in detail over here so this is you can you can see there are five different tests which you can give IELTS PTE Academic OET TOEFL or Cambridge Assessment English which is also called CAE so for that we can check over here if somebody who is competent in English would get, score zero points proficient in English would score 10 points and superior in English would score 20 points now what does that mean Com somebody who is competent in English means that he or she so should have at least six bands in each of the aisles or be at least be in OET similarly this is the score for TOEFL IBT or at least 50 in PTE academic or 169 in CAE so this is about the competent English for which you won't score any points for proficient English I guess this will be the most common one you should have at least seven in each IELTS this is the uh, for this is required for if you want to score 10 points and this will be valid for three years please make a note of that it will be valid for three years and at least be in OET this is the score for TOEFL IBT 65 minimum in each components in the PT academic and 185 in CAE in each component so and let's see what is superior English superior English means you should have eight bands in each of the in each of the section of IELTS please make a note that if you have you know 7.5 in even one of them you won't score 10 points so please uh, 20 points so please make a note of that similarly you should have at least 79 points in each section of PT academic or at least 200 points in each section of CAE and uh, you can check the score for TOEFL IBT as well so guys this was about the English okay moving on you would get points for your for your uh, skilled work experience outside Australia and in Australia as well so if you are less than three years of age then you uh, sorry <laughs> skilled experience then in that case you'll get a zero points uh, for somebody who's three to four years would get five points somebody who is eight to ten years would get would get 15 points so which means that the more points you have you would get more uh, the more work experience you have you get more points for that so uh, guys I'll just point out very th a small uh, thing over here please watch this video until the end at least all those people who are into ICT which is anybody who is who needs to go through ACS because there will be a certain points deductions in case of uh, somebody who's going through ACS I'll just explain the concept to you in the last of this video so please be with me okay moving on anybody who's who has been there in Australia would of course uh, score more points according to this table qualifications which is the educational qualifications so if you are if you have a doctorate degree which is equivalent to an Australian educational uh, standard in that case you would be 
getting 20 points for in case of bachelor degree you would be getting 15 points and so on okay uh, for Australian study requirement now this is an interesting one I tried to search it and what I found was this that your course should be registered in this CRI COS website when I tried searching for it it was actually not available so I couldn't get get much information about this point in particular when I'll you know I'll try to do some research on it and when I'll get some details on it I'll certainly make a video on this one okay so let's skip this one for a moment after this uh, the if you do a master's degree by research or a doctorate degree from an Australian educational institution so in that case you'll get five extra points which means study in Australia of course is given weightage now there are other factors as well which if you have accredited in a common in a community language let's see what it does mean it means that you have been accredited at a paraprofessional level or above for interpreting or translating the languages Hindi is also there so if somebody who's a Hindi to English translator uh, or an interpreter would be would actually get five more points but somebody who's accredited so five extra points for studying in a regional Australia so in case you are thinking of studying in Australia just make a uh, note of this point as well that if you study in the regional Australia then you'll get five extra points when you apply for the PR now partner skills qualification very important point you would get five extra points if your partner is also skilled professional which means his or her occupation should be listed in over here and skill assessment should also be done by the uh, should be positive by the uh, assessing authority whosoever is the assessing authority of uh, his or her occupation so this was about the this was about the uh, partner skills qualification professional year in Australia let's see what it is it means that you should have completed in Australia in the four years your professional year uh, should be completed in Australia in the four years before you are invited to apply for a visa in your nominated occupation or a closely related occupation completed over a period of 12 at least 12 months and provided by one of these organizations list is over here so guys this was the list and you can go to this web page over here I'll provide the link in the description box below you can go over here and check if in case uh, you meet the 65 points I'm sure there will be many people who would actually know meet this criteria so in that case you'd be eligible for applying the permanent residency of Australia so anybody who is from uh, IT background who needs to go through ACS skill assessment uh, there's something very important that I have to tell to you so please be with me okay now all those people working in information and communication technology which is the ICT sector all of you would be assessed by the Australian Computer Society which is ACS as I just told you so I've got a small bad news for you it goes like this let's suppose you did your bachelor's in IT or CS in that case and you had a work experience of five years in that case actually ACS would deduct two years and you would be deducted you would be given points only for three years if you had if you worked sorry uh, if you worked for let's say six years but your engineering was uh, but your engineering was in non IT field in that case you'd be your four years of your work experience would be deducted and you'd be given only two years so guys please take a note of it that in case you haven't been uh, you haven't studied from IT and you are working in IT in that case four years will be deducted so you could you should calculate your points accordingly ACS says that they deducted to meet uh, to meet the Australian standards there, I don't find any logic behind it but this is how it is alright guys so I'm here in the PDF from the official website of ACS and if I drag you to uh, the two examples I've mentioned over here, let me just uh, quickly search them. 
they've mentioned it very clearly. They've given two examples over here. The first one is about the employment completed after the qualification. The second one is before the qualification. They've mentioned that, let's suppose you complete a relevant bachelor degree with a major in ICT on 31st of January 2008 and you have four years of relevant work experience from 1st of April 2008 until 31st of Jan 2012 which means complete four years. In that case, two years of work experience will be used to satisfy the suitability criteria and your skill level requirement met date will be 31st of Jan 2010, which means straight away two years will be deducted. All suitable work experience completed after 31st of Jan 2010 will be considered as the skilled employment and eligible for the skilled migration points test. So it is clearly mentioned over here that the two years of work experience used to satisfy the suitability criteria is not eligible for the skilled migration points test but is assessed to meet the suitability criteria. So straight away two years will be deducted from your work experience and that goes for everybody who has studied from CS or IT background. And for all those people who haven't studied from the CS and IT and belong to the other mechanical, civil, electronics, electronics instrumentation, engineering, all those uh, who are actually working in IT, they get four years deducted from their work experience. So guys, thank you for watching this video. This was the complete information that I wanted to provide you. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed the channel yet, please subscribe if you think that this video will be helpful to your friends, colleagues or somebody in your family. Please forward this video to them.